we would be discussing about the comparative information. In order to understand the trend, in order to understand what's actually changed as compared to the prior period, we do need the prior period figures, right? So disclosure of the prior period information is very much relevant. Well, let's discuss the requirement under the IFRS, under the US CAP and the INDIAS in respect of the comparative information. Now, what do you mean by comparative information? I'll just brief you over here. Suppose I'm disclosing the figure of 2017 and 2016. So I need to disclose exactly a comparison between this, between the particular line item in the current year and exactly in the prior period. So the main distinction lies in for how many periods the disclosure is required. For example, in case of the IFRS, the minimum requirement is at least for one year, at least for one year, which means if my financial year is 2017, I need to disclose the corresponding figure for at least 2016 for both income statement and balance sheet and for the cash flow statement as well. So it requires at least one prior period details of any numerical data that is given any numerical figure given in the financial statements. So it requires at least a disclosure for one year. However, however, a third statement of financial position at the beginning of the preceding period is required, which means we need to prepare at least three financial position, statement of financial position, in a situation where the entity has adopted the IFRS for the first time, or there has been a retrospective change in the accounting policy, or any kind of a, um, a reclassification has been done, which has material effect for the financial statement at the beginning of the period. So in certain cases, certain cases, certain cases would be either your uh, adopting IFRS for the first time or in case there is any change in the financial uh, statement uh, accounting policy which has a retrospective application or there's any change in the um, accounting policies and if there is any restatement that we have made then in such a case we need to prepare three statement of only the statement of financial position which means the balance sheet only the balance sheet requirement is for the two quarters. This is for the current year. This is for the prior year. This is for the second prior year. For example, if there is a material change in 2017, I need to prepare it for the 2016. Also, I need to prepare it for the 1st January 2016. That is as, as good as 31st December 2015. I'm assuming a calendar year. So this is a requirement under the only under the IFRS. If certain conditions are satisfied the first condition is if there is, a, if there is a retrospective change in the accounting policy if there is a restatement or we are applying IFRS for the first time now let's discuss about the US gap now what does US gap says US gap and is a primarily based on uh, rules and the in the US and the IFRS is based and hence in such a case it requires at least two years comparative for all the financial statement items all the financial statement statements except balance sheet which means for income statement for statement of changes in equity and for cash flow statement they require at least two period disclosure that is for 2017 2016 and for 2015 however for balance sheet the requirement is only for two years one current and one prior so in a nutshell there is no specific requirement under the US gap no specific requirement however for s for SEC registrants they need to comply by this rule for any any statement any sta any financial statement apart from balance sheet the minimum period is three years and that is two prior periods and one current year and for the balance sheet at least one period at least two periods one period is for the current year current year and one for the prior year this is for the balance sheet this is current year plus prior year one plus prior year two this is for the income statement so this is the minimum minimum disclosure requirement under both 
US GAAP and the IF, uh, US GAAP and the IFRS. So in case of in the AS, in the AS is same as IFRS. So if you know IFRS, the same is applicable for the in the AS. So you do not need to read it specifically. So this is the structure. 